Hi everyone, I'm going to go through the worksheet from Chemsheets, GCSE Quick Check Rates C. Um, I'm going to show you the working, hopefully it will make it a little bit clearer. Um, mark your work and let me know if you have any questions. So, a student carried out an experiment where he recorded the volume of hydrogen gas formed as magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid. The student reacted an excess of magnesium ribbon. Now excess just means more than, um, more than is needed. The magnesium won't all react, there'll be some left at the end and the reason we do that is to ensure that the other reactant all reacts. So the other reactant is 25 centimetres cubed of 0.1 mole per decimetre cubed acid at 20, 20 degrees C. The student collected the gas in a measuring cylinder and plotted a graph of his results. We've got balanced equation, a graph, and we've got the diagram just here. So question one says, calculate the mean rate in the first 20 seconds. Now remember, mean means average. We're not looking for the precise rate at 20 seconds. We're looking for the average rate across the first 20 seconds. So from zero to 20. Now, if we look at the graph here, we can see that it is more steep at the beginning than it is towards the end of that 20 second period. We have a steeper gradient at the beginning. But working out the average rate sort of evens out um, the differences in the speeds of the reaction and just gives us a basic average rate. So we are going to look at this graph and say, if we take a value at 20 seconds, okay, I'm gonna read down there's 20 seconds, and then we're going to read across from this graph where the line meets kind of neatly. That wasn't very good. I went up. You can see I went up there. So this is where you should use a ruler, really. Um, anyway, that comes out to be there. And it is 45, um, 45 centimetres cubed. So the average rate is the gas produced... And that's divided by the time taken. The gas produced was 45 centimetres cubed, and that was in 20 seconds. And if we put that into a calculator, that comes out to be 2.25 centimetres cubed per second. And you do need to include that unit. That's really important. Now, the next question... I just scroll down, says draw a tangent to the graph, and I'm going to change my pen colour, draw a tangent to the graph at 20 seconds and use it to find the rate at 20 seconds. Now this is now asking us for a precise rate of reaction and it is looking for what is that rate at 20 seconds. So I'm going to put a little x on the graph there because I know I want to find the, the rate at that point. Now a tangent, remember, is a straight line that touches a curve and matches the slope at the point of the curve we're looking at. So we want to know what the slope of the curve is at 20 seconds. Now ideally, well not ideally, you have to use a ruler for this. Um, I am not able to use a ruler because I don't have that facility on my computer. However, I can draw a line. I can draw a straight line in, okay, and I can put it in sort of around there and I might look at that and think, oh, is that okay? Now, I personally think that if I'm looking at that, my line is too far across. If I put little red markers in, those little red markers are marking where the curve and my green tangent line are touching. Now, if you look, my X is more towards this end, okay, which means that my tangent is not quite right. So what I'm going to do is I just need to move my tangent line a little which I can shuffle and I just want to move it around a little bit until it looks like that x is right in the middle and I think that that is about right just about there okay now if I go back to my pen get rid of that just oh this is where I don't know what I'm doing can you tell you 10 So if I go back to using my pen, so I click around, okay, and I put in little markers again to where my tangent line is touching the curve, can you now see that that green X is in the middle of those two points? That's what we're looking for with a tangent.
Okay, so that's my tangent line just there. So now, calculating the rate of reaction here, we're going to use the gradient. And the gradient is calculated using change in y divided by change in x. And you might be thinking, what do you mean by in the y and in x? Well, what we're doing is we're looking at a, a triangle. Okay, we want to draw a triangle um, on the graph, as big a triangle as possible. So I'm going to take a triangle here, big as possible, I'm going to put some straight lines in. Hopefully they'll be straight. So I've drawn as big a triangle as possible on that graph. And we are now going to look at the change in the height of the triangle in the y direction divided by the change of the size of the triangle in the x direction. So that's what we're looking at, change in the y direction, change in the x. Now, if we look at this graph here, okay, the y direction is starting at 70 at the top. And if we look at the triangle, the triangle is here at 26. That's what the value is just here. So 70 minus 26 is our change in y. And the change in x is going to be, if we read down here, 46 minus 0, because my triangle goes all the way to 0. And that is going to enable us to calculate the gradient nicely. So 70 minus 26, that's 44. So 44 divided by 46. And that comes out to be 0.96, and again, centimetres cubed per second. OK, so that is calculating the gradient, which I know some people found a little bit difficult, but hopefully that's explained it. So moving on to question three, and I'm going to have to jump around a little bit here with the, um, the question and that kind of stuff. So question three says the student repeated the experiment using an excess of magnesium ribbon. Again, an excess, but this time with 25 centimetres cubed of 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed at 20, centimetre, at 20 degrees C. Sketch a line on the graph to show this reaction. Label it three. So this is where we need to be looking at what information we've got. They've told us that graph three, and I'm just moving up to the top here, is using 25 centimetres cubed of 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed acid, and that's at 20 degrees C. The next thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to look at question four, because question four um, is very similar. Um, so we'll just have a look at that together as well. Um, question four is repeating the experiment using an excess of magnesium ribbon with again 25 centimetres cubed of 0.1 mole per decimetre cubed, but at 30 degrees C. So that's what we're going to have a look here. Graph four, 25 centimetres cubed of 1 mole per decimetre cubed acid, but this time at 30 degrees C. So let's have a look at what we can do with this graph. For both of these, we're looking at sketching a new curve on this graph. So we're going to go with the first one, graph number three, 25 centimetres cubed. Well, the initial graph was also at 25 centimetres cubed. But what have we done to the concentration? We've gone from 1 to 0.5. The concentration has halved. Now, if the concentration has halved, that means that we're going to get a lower rate of reaction and that means that our graph is going to be less steep. OK, so we're going to have a less steep gradient. Now, the other thing that we need to consider, though, is that if we've got half of the concentration, but we've got the same volume, what can we say about the number of particles present in our reaction mixture? Well, we've actually going to have halved the particles. We've got the same volume, but half the concentration half the particles. And so half the number of particles in the same space, yes, lowers the rate of reaction. But also, what does it do to how much gas is produced? Well, if we've got half of the reactant, we can only get half of the amount of product. So our graph for graph three is going to end up half the height of the first graph. So I would draw a line, probably not that long because it's going to be a slow reaction. But we're going to have a graph that ends up half the height and is going to be less fast. But that is really badly drawn. So we'll just do that again. So a less steep graph 
and it's going to end at half the height and that would be graph three. Now looking at graph four next, graph four again 25 centimeters cubed same as before, one mole per decimeter cubed same as before but what has changed? The temperature. We've got a higher temperature. Well because our concentration and volume is the same our graph is going to end up at the same height. So graph four is going to end up at the same height as the original graph, but we've got a higher temperature. Now, an interesting little fact about rate of reaction is that if you increase the, the temperature of a rate of, of a chemical reaction by 10 degrees C from approximately room temperature, you get approximately doubling the rate of reaction. So by only increasing by 10 degrees C, that's not very much at all. You can double the rate of reaction and it means that temperature is a very good way of increasing the rate of a chemical reaction. So faster rate of reaction means a steeper slope. So something that looks a bit like this, it's going to finish earlier, but at the same height as the original graph. And so graph number four will look something like that. The final question on the sheet is asking us to explain why temperature affects the rate of reactions. Well, this is where we need to be thinking about the energy. OK, so the particles have more energy. We must be talking about particles. So more energy. They are going to therefore collide more frequently. We should say so move faster. So more energy, so move faster. Collide more frequently. We must use that word frequently. We can't just say collide more. OK, and more collisions. More collisions will be greater than activation energy or successful. So let me know if any of that didn't make any sense or if you need any of it explaining again, send me a message and I'll get back to you.